Texas Lutheran University. Um, and so we welcome Getty. Um, Yeku Getty graduated in uh, 2010, uh, so a little while ago, but he's a, he's a fellow bulldog, just like you guys. And um, after he graduated from TLU, he went on to law school um, here in, in Texas. And then he, uh, after he got his law degree, he practiced here in Texas. But then he moved back to Kosovo. And, um, and so during those years, uh, he worked with uh, Mr. Uchovi and doing trans some translating work um, of his books. And, um, and so now they're coming to, they're in the US going around to um, different places to promote the book, as well as to celebrate Kosovo's Independence Day, which is tomorrow. Uh, they gained their independence, and so there's gonna be uh, some talk about that too. So I will turn it over to these guys, and, uh, and then there'll be some time for Q&A afterwards. Okay, all right, thank you very much. <laughs> So, awesome. okay. I'm doing this in German, and Mr. Pajoba speaks perfect German because he uh, uh, lived in Germany, uh, worked as correspondent for a, a national newspaper for about 25 years. And that's where he did a lot of uh, his research. But he can't do it in German, so he'll speak in Albanian and I'll translate it. That's, uh, that's okay with everybody else. Uh, but we'll, uh, do a brief introduction about Kosovo and its recent history for 10 20 minutes, then we'll do the uh, Q&A. So. Miss Bailey, I'm honored to be among you today. They, for a story coming from Kosovo, uh, have a duty to uh, uh, speak about a country that is one of the uh, youngest or newest countries in the world. So the ID card of Kosovo is uh, the Western ID. It's uh, the degree of the, uh, the West uh, following the, uh, the end of the Cold War. Kosovo Kosovo is also a result of the breakup of the former Yugoslavia. So you might know how Yugoslavia broke up. Uh, it was initiated, uh, and it was a bloody process. It was initiated by the nationalist, uh, expansionist uh, uh, leadership of uh, the Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic. So, but out of that tragic war, there were a few positive things that came out. So with the fall of the Milosevic's dictatorship, there uh, were changes in the political map of the region, the Balt, which is the Balkans, the southeast of Europe. So after uh, Croatia, Bosnia, Slovenia, uh, Macedonia, and Montenegro all became independent states in Southeastern Europe, Kosovo also uh, gained its independence. Cilja, 
существует вид не имея мацины аутома вон протекторат на контакт since 1999 Kosovo had been under an international protectorate according to United So following the international protectorate we again are independence in 2008 nine years ago and that was declared on February 17, 2008. So tomorrow Kosovo celebrates its ninth anniversary. It is a very important uh, historic date for uh, the people of Kosovo. It, also, it is also important for the international community in the Southeast Europe. Because despite the tragic problems that we had, uh, now there is an independent country that uh, has become a factor of peace in, in the region. So the state of Kosovo, the independent state of Kosovo, put an end to the wars that uh, lasted for over 100 years between the Albanians and the Serbs and the Macedonians and the Greeks um, in the region. These wars begin um, around the time the Ottoman Empire began to fall apart in, in Southeast Europe. This is just an overview uh, or an introduction uh, so that we may understand the position of Kosovo as a new state in, in Southeast Europe. Sister <laughs> So as a historian, I have an obligation to share with you um, information about the new state of Kosovo, uh, about its people, who uh, its people are, uh, uh, what their past has been, what they have gone through, and uh, shed some light on the historical processes that we've been through so that uh, we may better understand Kosovo and the region. Kosovo today is just a political uh, nomination. It began in the 19th century. The name of Kosovo first appeared because of uh, Serbian and Russian expansionism. They um, um, sought to use Kosovo, the name of Kosovo, uh, for uh, political purposes for um, their uh, territorial expansion uh, in Southeast Europe. The actual real historic um, and ethnic name of Kosovo is Dardania. Dardania nihet nga antiketeti. Dardania is known since ancient times. Fjall ashtë për një shtet ndërmës vansisht për të antiketeti. We're speaking here about a state or a country that was one of the most important in the ancient times. Edhe nga autorët antik, po dhe nga vërimit e tjera, dhe se Dardania ka lutë një rëllë shumë transition në konfigurimin e Evropës ju blindorë dhe dhe zërë. Ancient authors and other sources uh, 
point out that uh, Dardania played a very important role in Southeast Europe and the uh, Mediterranean region. Later sources show that Dardania was an initiator of uh, three most important empires uh, in the ancient times. And an initiator of, of two great civilizations in uh, uh, that still exist today in the world. Historicist, Duk, Rost, Mansa, Vertice, Dardania, Dikoi, Te Troia, Mrtnia Troes, Mrtnia Briga, the Mrtnia Tite, Yas, Vardim Si, and Dardani Sabdik. It is documented that Dardania had its impact in the uh, in the Trojan Kingdom, Bridget, in, uh, in, in the Bridget Kingdom, in the Bricks uh, Kingdom, and the Hittite Kingdoms. Their arguments that all these three nations were uh, Dardanian tribes. We learn from ancient writers such as um, Homer and uh, Virgilius uh, and other sources that the uh, Dardanians or the Dardani had a uh, had a decisive impact in the, uh, the Trojan War. Homer says that um, after Priam lost the Trojan War, he uh, had moved to Italy and there he uh, helped in uh, Help found the Roman Empire. So the Roman Empire and afterwards the Byzantine Empire uh, too are a product of the uh, Dardanian substratum. So younger historians or more recent historians call it by different names, well, uh, Lyrian and Thracian substratum. So to get to the point that I would like to make now, this is an important uh, uh, position to clarify first. Because even after the arrival of Christianity in the region, uh, the uh, local uh, the, uh, emperors of um, of origin, Constantine the Great and Justinian, they uh, uh, accepted Christianity. Even after this point, uh, Dardania was the center of uh, where uh, civilizations clashed in the Dardani. It was a point where empires and civilizations clashed. Afterwards, um, uh, we also had the uh, uh, West and Eastern blocs clash there. So, uh, by uh, coincidence that Kosovo was the, uh, the center where uh, the Ottomans and the uh, European Christians first clashed in the Middle Ages. The 1389 Battle of Kosovo is well known in history. So after losing this war, not just the Balkans, which is Southeast Europe, but the wider area of Europe fell under uh, Ottoman rule and remained uh, under the Ottomans for almost five centuries. 
studimi, pasin dhe të qarë Osman, gjithmonë ku fini i këtu një qytetnime ushtërinë, apsinin e Dardanis, Kosovës, Sotme. And uh, it's, uh, it's interesting that even during these 500 uh, years of uh, Ottoman rule, uh, the border uh, uh, between the two civilizations was between the Nima, uh, fell through Kosovo or in, in Kosovo. So the border between Islam and Christianity was uh, through So there's a very fluid um, a border between uh, the East and the West, meaning Islam and Islam. That caused for the local uh, uh, for the, uh, the local population, whose ethnic Albanians, to be in the center of this uh, these clashes. These clashes became quite tragic in the 19th century. When the Ottoman Empire began to fall apart. And this integration in the Ottoman Empire was known as the Eastern Crisis, uh, historians, and it affected mainly the ethnic Albanians and uh, other uh, ethnic groups in the Balkans. So this is the point uh, in these clashes where uh, uh, Russian and uh, Serbian expansionism appeared and the, uh, the banner of uh, pan-Slavism. So all these peoples were, uh, were considered Slavic peoples and they share the uh, Christian Orthodox religion. And we may freely say that the Slavic Orthodox uh, uh, group gained the most out of this, this clash. Beginning from late 19th century, where we had an important international congress called the Congress of Berlin, up to World War I, Russia was able to extend its influence in the region and uh, uh, get a hold of uh, or subjugate under its control four uh, countries in Southeast Europe. I am the current president of the Slav Orthodox. So Russia was able to. Uh, uh, get new states formed in uh, in the Balkans, and these were mainly Slavic and Orthodox Christian Orthodox states. So Greece, modern Greece, was created as a new state. In 1822. A Serbian state, the country of Serbia, was also Initially, was just an autonomous province within the Ottoman Empire, and then became a uh, sovereign, independent country in uh, Criminate, Montenegro became a, a country of its own, Bulgaris. and Bulgaria uh, was also formed. <laughs> Russian support. <coughs> Creation of these new states, this new configuration actually caused uh, brought to uh, brought us to World War One. And then we know what the consequences were. Two empires in Europe fell: uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire fell. The German Empire also fell, and William the First, or Wilhelm the First. The Ukrainian reality is that the Bosch is pretty anglis, Francis. So that the modern, the modern big shoe, me, me, I am from historical transition. And the Allies. Uh, uh, 
one air control over the region, a very important region, created a new reality. Uh, so from this point on, you had uh, British and French influence in the region. At this time, uh, an Albanian state was also created in 1912. But it was also an Albanian state with um, uh, half of the, its territory uh, left to other countries. Kosovo dhe vit një pjesë e visë e shqiptare i metën servis më vërën, së kosë më vërën, më vërën, ju së avisë. And other Albanian inhabited areas were left to Serbia and later Yugoslavia. Nga kjo ko fillon objektivisht procesi i shtetë nërtimi të Kosovës. From this point begins the historic process of Kosovo's formation as a country. Ashtë një proces i cili ka zhatë të dhe të dy vjetë. It's a process that lasts about 82 years. Një proces cili ka sjelë të konfrontimi mes Shqiptarë dhe Serbë. It's a process that brought as a confrontation between Serbs and Albanians. I cili mori fund me ndërhyrin e natës me marks të vitet një me në që në në të nëmë dhe fushatën e rore që shtetët e natës të veshën nga shëdojët So it ended with the 1999 U.S.-led NATO campaign. NATO bombings forced Serbian and Yugoslavian forces out of Kosovo. There was yet another factor that exerted influence in these developments. Ramja e ideologjisë komuniste. It was the fall of the communist ideology. Dhe shpërberja e Yugoslavis. And the disintegration of the former Yugoslavia. Kjo pra është e përsendrimi që sot dhune ko këtu si tem për e jush. And this is the concentration, the nexus of my lecture today. Dhe fokusimi në të e si cili ka shenë roli shqiptarve në Kosovë, për rëzimin e komunizmit. And I would like to focus on what the role of the ethnic Albanians was leading to the fall of communism in Kosovo and former Yugoslavia. Dhe cili ka shenë roli shqiptare në shme shpërberin e ishë Yugoslavis. And what the role of the ethnic Albanians was in the disintegration of the former Yugoslavia as a federation. Me nëjë se këto, këto dy zhvillime jenë në rridhë në menjën e tjetër. So I think these two developments are linked to each other. And they fed, they encouraged each other. The Berlin Wall fell in November 1989. And that's when the process of the fall of communism also begins in the disintegration of the Soviet Union. Filan Ramja bipolarity blockers. So the bipolarity, the Cold War, begins to end at this point. The clash between the East and the West comes to its end. And at the same time, uh, at the same time, this historic development uh, gave the Albanians the opportunity to, to pursue two important uh, goals. So first, the Albanians wanted to use the fall of communism to free themselves from a communist dictatorship. And this came about with, uh, with the commitment um, of an intellectual elite in Kosovo. So in December 1989, um, got together and formed a uh, pro-Western political party. 
anti-communist in Yugoslavia. It was one of the largest uh, anti-communist political parties in, in the former Yugoslavia. This was the Democratic League of Kosovo, and it helped uh, with the uh, fall of communism in uh, Yugoslavia. Uh, fall of communism and the disintegration of, uh, of the Federation of Yugoslavia. The uh, nationalist, the expansionist uh, regime of uh, Serbian dictators, Slobodan Milosevic, was also a factor in uh, helping the disintegration of, uh, of former Yugoslavia. Uh, Serbian dictator Slobodan Milosevic wanted to uh, convert, uh, turn all of Yugoslavia into just one larger Serbian state. So within three months, I think Albanians in Kosovo were able to uh, completely dismember uh, uh, the Communist Party in Kosovo. It was one of the most dynamic collapses that occurred in uh, Eastern Europe at the time. In Romania and other countries in, in Europe, uh, it led up to bloodshed. Uh, the efforts to uh, uh, oust communism led to bloodshed, whereas in Kosovo it was very, uh, very fast in. Uh, it was a very quick and uh, bloodless effort, uh, meaning the effort to uh, communism. Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Well, uh, it happened because the Albanians had always been anti-communist. Anti-communist. Yep. Communist. They were forced into communism in 1945. So the Soviet Red Army uh, entered Yugoslavia and joined the uh, Yugoslav partisans led by Tito. And they teamed up with very uh, uh, small and uh, scattered uh, uh, communist cells that were active in Albania, but they were very uh, uh, very insignificant at the time. So, uh, Tito's partisans, the communists, were able to uh, destroy infrastructure of all nationalist and non-communist parties in Kosovo and Albania. So, in November Historia ideologică Yugoslavă, pavaia sovietică, o mă nume minimizu cât luft, pavaia, kështu, e ka parasit se një luft të disa grupe dhe dvoglja reakcionare. Historians in communist Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union and elsewhere, led by communist ideology, try to minimize this popular movement in Kosovo and present it as just some sort of guerrilla warfare, small pockets fighting. But if you actually 
take a look at the uh, human potential that was invested in that uh, popular uh, resistance. Uh, it turns out to be one of the most uh, uh, significant, one of the greatest anti-communist movements at the time. Forța nacionalistă și clară că poate reducă un grad mizet mi volatil. So the nationalist forces, the Albanian nationalist forces, had about twenty thousand fighters. Califtu cater mui. They fought about four months. Când a dus trei găsind la, se înscrie la dată. Great armies that were also helped or aided by the Allies, unfortunately. And the communists carried out massacres against the Albanian population. Within four months, there were uh, 50,000 people murdered, killed. In four years, such a Italian the German, in the four years of World War II in Kosovo and Albania, which were occupied by Italy and then uh, Germany, uh, there were only 200 uh, uh, people uh, killed. Objectively, then, there was no resistance against the Germans. Because uh, part of the Albanian population uh, uh, welcomed the Germans as liberators. It sounds absurd, but at the time, uh, at the time the, uh, they were, uh, the Albanian people were united under one country. So, uh, Yugoslav Kingdom at the time fell, uh, and the Albanians were reunited <inaudible> in the country. <inaudible> So the return of the uh, communists now, uh, of the Tito's Yugoslav fighters, uh, that marked a, a reoccupation of Kosovo. So the new regime, brutal, it brought a communist brutal regime, a brutal communist regime. It sought revenge against the Albanian population. Uh, and they used as a pretext. Uh, yeah, Using as a pretext, uh, supposedly uh, Albanian cooperation with uh, with Germany and calling them And this brought the terror with the uh, fifty thousand dead. They pursued the same terror against ethnic Germans in uh, other areas of Yugoslavia. And. Uh, as a matter of fact, they, they were um, they, uh, they went extinct, or they, they, uh, the population was uh, was got rid of. So the, com the communist regime uh, was installed by terror, ideological terror. This is where we see why uh, the Democratic League of Kosovo in uh, 1989 was able to get rid of communism in Kosovo within three months. Genocide 45 years ago. Working with enthusiasm in the fall of the Berlin Wall, and the disintegration of the Soviet Union, so that it could so that it could realign uh, with the West again. This is how we explain this great transformation here. So the Albanians were always anti-communist. Dictatura comunista e cam mai pas de viet, dar și comunismul s-a ușit hold in Albania and Kosovo for 50 years. Nu nici nici gândia Trump ni gulag. In a uh, gulag state. Știu la fa, dar tot pre și pare că Kosovo s-a zon de televizie în stat de tux. So the Albanians in Kosovo also used the circumstances to build their own country, their own, own state. Spreveni Kosovis Disintegration of Yugoslavia. 
Uh, he, I think Albanians use the disintegration of Yugoslavia to create their own state uh, based on the right to self-determination. To, to, to uh, break away from uh, Belgrade, which is the capital of Serbia, um, break away from a uh, criminal regime that was the regime of the uh, Serbian government. And the, uh, they, they, they used their, their status as an autonomous province within Yugoslavia to, uh, to also create their, their own state and break away from, uh, uh, from Serbia. So they used that status and the uh, autonomy they had to uh, declare their uh, independence or secession from Serbia. We did that in July in 1990. So that's a historic date. Because the Albanian population democratically decided to uh, break away from uh, Belgrade. That's where an 80 year uh, path begins for the, uh, the state of Kosovo. And during those eight years, we, uh, we had a, an institutional, uh, uh, peaceful resistance. Uh, and the leader of that historic uh, process was Dr. Ibrahim Rogova. In those circumstances, well, Kosovo was still under Serbian occupation. Uh, I think Albanians in Kosovo created a perilous state. It organized all sectors of life. Education, culture, health care, uh, to some degree uh, the free market economy, a defense system. While Serbia remained a, uh, simply an occupying force in Kosovo. It only had its own police uh, force and military in Kosovo, but nothing else. It couldn't have any effect in the uh, uh, public life of Kosovo, intellectual, cultural, or uh, even economic life. The parallel state of Kosovo, although it wasn't internationally recognized, because the uh, process of Yugoslavia's uh, disintegration was still in underway, and uh, it, it became a bloody process. Yugoslav army military, which was, uh, was Bosnia and Serbia, would attack every country, every state of former Yugoslavia that would declare its independence. They did that in Slovenia, Croatia, especially in Bosnia. Between 1991 to 1995, world witnessed a, a genocide in the former Yugoslavia because uh, Milosevic's forces, Serbian forces, uh, killed over 300,000 people in Croatia and Bosnia. Uh, this came in, in 1995 with the uh, Dayton Accords signed in, the, uh, in Dayton, Ohio. And that's uh, the historic, this is where the historic role of the United States and NATO comes into play. This role uh, had an impact in, uh, in Kosovo's independence too. Uh, before they signed the agreement in Dayton, Ohio, uh, the United States led a uh, brief campaign against Serbian forces in Bosnia in August uh, 1995. And Serbia was, was forced to accept the new reality in Bosnia. Uh, 
or in any court to the or date and agreement. Uh, uh, date and agreement split the uh, uh, country into three three parts, but at least it brought it, it brought peace to to Bosnia in the same uh, uh, country as a whole. Was they done it? Was did Semidoshevici do not provoke the offensive? After uh, the Dayton agreements, uh, after fighting subsided in, uh, in other parts of former Yugoslavia, it was well known that Milosevic would turn to Kosovo uh, to provoke a uh, conflict there. His intention was to commit genocide in Kosovo and just uh, bring the international community for the FEA complete. Uh, change of reality in the Mendonta said they told the concession of Toysa, yet me of Tushmech, I take it do the Lira, Zbrosko, so in the ship. He thought that by agreeing to peace uh, in Bosnia and other parts, uh, the international community would uh, let him off hook uh, in uh, 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 allow him to do whatever he pleased in Kosovo. The Kshuha, if you like, got beat him, felt a job. So they began uh, the beginning in the brutality against the Albanian uh, civilian population in Kosovo, the defenseless population. And so there's two years, a two-year period in which uh, the United States and Western allies uh, worked together to uh, not allow Milosevic to uh, uh, start a conflict in the southern front. The southern front uh, uh, was mainly Kosovo, and the uh, northern front was Bosnia and other parts of the former Yugoslavia. So the United States helped organize three or four national uh, conferences uh, in the dialogue between the Serbs and Albanians uh, so that uh, the parties could come to a, uh, an agreement on peace. But uh, Serbian dictator Milosevic refused all, uh, rejected all options. After and the uh, concession was made, he would continue with, uh, uh, with the violent campaigns against the civilian population in Kosovo. So this when uh, ethnic Albanians actually begin their own uh, armed resistance, a uh, form of uh, an uprising against the Serbs. So the Kosovo Liberation yeah, Army uh, uh, undertook to uh, carry out a resistance uh, war of uh, liberation against uh, the Serbian army. And Serbia used the uh, uh, resistance as a pretext for, uh, for even a greater, uh, uh, more brutal campaign against the Albanians. So, so, uh, began a uh, very, uh, very brutal campaign against the uh, <coughs> Albanian civilian population. And it ended with the, uh, uh, sought to end that with the ethnic cleansing of Kosovo by right, getting rid of the Albanian population. And this is in, uh, where the um, intervention of the United States and other NATO allies comes into play. In February 1999, Serbia refused to sign yet another uh, peace agreement, and uh, Western allies threatened Serbia either uh, agree to stop all uh, military uh, uh, actions in Kosovo or you'll face uh, uh, bombings. So. 
servis dhe shqiptare një platform për marveshën e arguje. So in France, the United States and the uh, other allies uh, offered Serbia a chance a, a peace platform in, uh, in what, what are called the Brambuye talks. Cilin, Milosevic e refuzoj. But Milosevic re rejected it once again. Dhe naturisht se pas asaj filloj sulli i forca <coughs> ushtarakët NATO së ndaj forca policor ushtarakët Serbim Kosovë March 24th, 1999, uh, finally, uh, ultimately, forced Serbia to withdraw its forces from Kosovo. Kosovo and Kosovo became uh, uh, was uh, declared an international protectorate. Kjo pra është ajo që sot më thuat, shteti Kosovës doli nga këto dy zhvillime, nga ramja komunizmit dhe nga rënimi i hegemonis se një dushevic. And the state of the So the country or the state of Kosovo uh, was born out of the uh, uh, fall of communism and uh, the collapse of uh, Serbian expansionism or the uh, uh, Serbian dictatorship in the region. This political reality in the Southeast Europe brought the independent state of Kosovo. State of Kosovo is from Jurish Montuos, which produced the trade per trade in the Hyres, in the Contare, in the War, in Crime, in Shadar, in the NATO of Kosovo. So it's a direct product, we may say, of uh, Western, US led, in, uh, US led. Intervention in uh, in Southeast Europe. The public Kosovo's, if I am draw, the state of Bashkune, the member NATO's, per contribute to the to plan to support to us to us the Zdukenga at the Bitune. I think Albanians in Kosovo are very grateful to the United States for. Uh, uh, for uh, preventing the genocide and uh, uh, putting an end to the eff uh, Milosevic's efforts to uh, uh, exterminate the Albanian population in Kosovo. With this, I would like to uh, 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 but, uh, just to note that all of this uh, uh, this historic development brings us back to uh, what is called the Eastern Crisis, the end of the 19th century. When the Albanians, um, which were part of the uh, uh, Ottoman Empire, uh, struggled for an independent state of their own. At the time, uh, Slavic. Uh, uh, Germany as uh, or the Slavic power in the in the region did not allow it. They weren't able to prevent the state of Albania in 1912. They were, they were able to keep half of Albania's territory for themselves. And these territories were held under uh, uh, Serbian or Slavic occupation, and uh, the occupation was most uh, most brutal, most uh, severe uh, during communist times. And, and this occupation ended with the NATO bombings in the spring of 1999. 
because of this, now we have a new re political reality in Southeast Europe where we have two ethnic Albanian countries or states. As it was once sought uh, in the 19th century. But we have a new reality where there are two ethnic Albanian states. And uh, this concludes uh, the message that I wanted to deliver today. And it was my honor to, to provide you with some details. It's easy to access objectively because there are too many books that have uh, formed our history. And the ethnic Albanians are more to objective historians Serbia and Russia. Appears in uncivilized people uh, that deserve, deserve no, uh, don't deserve to have a country of their own. I believe that the two Albanian states in the Balkans, in Southeast Europe, will be a stabilizing factor on the condition that they remain an ally to the United States and the West. Thank you very much. take a few qu questions if um, you have any. Uh, hope I didn't lose much in the translation. Any questions? I have a question. Um, so as a, as a new country, 2008, right, independence, what has been the biggest, uh, biggest challenge? Biggest challenge Kosovo has faced as a newly independent country. Our greatest challenge has been to uh, uh, face two mentalities, two different uh, which we inherited uh, unjustly. It was one uh, uh, communist uh, mentality. Which wasn't easy to put aside in certain segments. And on the other side was the challenge of facing uh, uh, Serbia's and Russia's continuous uh, effort to destabilize and prevent uh, the state of Kosovo. This interference uh, continues to this day in various forms, unfortunately. And I, I think that is important for the role of the United States. Uh, uh, Serbia would have surely uh, turned Kosovo into another battlefield. And this, this possibility can't, cannot be ruled out at the time when uh, Russia uh, tries to gain a, a, a new position, a strengthened position in, uh, in the geopolitical reality of the region. Any other questions? I have, a, I have a couple of things just to kind of bring it into perspective for you guys. This, during the war with Serbia, um, Getty was about 12 yeah. years old and went through, his whole family went, lived in that crisis. And uh, <clears throat> over the years, we've had about 13 Kosovar students and all of them. They either stayed in Kosovo and they lived through the wars. A couple of them lost family members. Um, and but a couple of them did. They fled to Mas nearby Macedonia, and then they came back. And so, just to kind of put it in context for you all, somebody standing here, you know, went actually through that whole genocide. And Getty then came to the U.S. 
got an education, a law degree, and now has gone back to Kosovo. Because you might expect there could be brain drain of people, young people wanting to leave and get out of the country, but he's gone back as they're trying to encourage other young people to get over um, <clears throat> the whole notion of um, the kind of historical propaganda of communism, so trying to uh, bring the new ideas of the new Kosovo as an independent country. And then the second thing to just point out, the whole notion of NATO, um, as Kosovo was trying to fight the war, it's in oversimplified terms, think of it as a school ground and a big bully picking on the little guy. And so that was Kosovo. They were trying to fight, um, but they needed help. So then you can picture some other guys coming in and going against the bully. And that's kind of what NATO is about. And so if you haven't been watching the news, I totally encourage you to do that because NATO is in the news. And there's talk about disbanding the NATO, which is key to world peace. Um, so pay attention to the news now because it's circling around. And so countries like Kosovo, um, they're right in the middle of it. Uh, with, and just in the news today, there was uh, news about Russia. And they've been going in, in the sea, in the air, all over the place, kind of testing the US. And um, so history often repeats itself. So, Pay attention to the news because NATO is is definitely in the news and what has just happened with Kosovo. Well, thank you, Sharon. Yeah, well, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that was a very good synopsis yeah. of uh, the lecture and NATO's role. Because we're we're kind of scared, you know, sometimes, but uh, yeah. hopefully things will uh, will not get worse, but they'll get better. So, if you have any more questions. Uh, uh, Lecture is kind of interesting, but I hope I didn't uh, didn't get much lost in translation. That's uh, it's always a challenge. Uh, um, we have the handouts for you. That's uh, more or less what, what uh, Mr. Bujovi spoke about today, but but in a more uh, I guess maybe easier to understand way fashion. And if you, if you all have any questions like afterwards or later, <coughs> I can totally put you in contact with Gail. Yeah. And so that would be fine. Okay? okay? All right, thank you again. Thank you. School graduate and very uh, successful alumni. So if you have any questions about that, you could. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Brown. I appreciate it. And Getty also participated in the last semester. Oh yes. If anybody is thinking about that, he spent a semester in DC doing that for me. Where did you get your law degree from? Uh, SMU. SMU and what is it? Like, what was your specialization? Well, I mean, you get a general degree, right. uh, but you can pick certain courses, and I probably lean towards more corporate law. And I took a couple of oil and gas classes, which I didn't quite use in practice, but uh, uh, as a board, I've been. Uh, Doing some corporate work with banking and finance, and then uh, a little bit of immigration work because uh, you're part of a community that has a lot of immigrants, and uh, you know uh, you know people that you can't say no to. That's it's a big problem for lawyers. Like you just can't say no to anyone. <laughs> yeah, are you planning to go to law school? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, good luck. Uh, it's, <laughs> We're gonna need it. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, it's a good profession, I'd say. It's not easy, and the market isn't uh, maybe as it used to be, but uh, if you know what you want to do at a time, it's, it's always a good profession. For more information, please visit tlu.edu.